silently Hello Horror Video Order stuff, welcome back! Have you seen that EOS HD have now released a version 3 of their Pro Color package for Sony cameras? I'm going to assume the answer is yes because you clicked on this video. A little while ago I made a video about EOS HD and I gave you my thoughts. Basically the idea behind it is you get a PDF with settings so that you can tweak your picture profile settings. The idea being that it will give you a, a more Canon-like look with more flattering skin tones, more true and vibrant uh, primary colours, that kind of thing. So after many requests from you guys, I thought I would snap up a copy and give you my thoughts. Plus I had a word with EOS HD and they really generously gave me 10 copies to give away to you guys. Uh, and to find out how to enter, which is super easy by the way, uh, I'll be telling you about that later on in the video, so stay tuned for that. I've also got a whole load of recommendations of how I would use EOS HD, so hopefully um, if you have purchased it you'll find it interesting and helpful. And I also made a guide of how to expose the three profiles that you get within the Pro Color package. Um, if I had included it in this video, it would have just been too long, so I have done it as a separate video, and that is linked below. So I spent quite a lot of time with these profiles. It took me quite a while to get this ready for you guys. Um, but what I wanted to find out was, uh, firstly, what's changed, and what do you actually get in the new profile? How does the footage compare to Canon footage? And then what about a default Sony profile? What's the deal with these two new modes, XR and Deep Warmth? And lastly, is the package any good? So, let's dive in. Unlike the previous versions of EOS HD, this has three distinct modes. Uh, the first, which is I've just been calling standard, it's just Pro Color standard. Then we have XR, and then we have Deep Warmth. As far as I can tell, the standard Pro Color mode is relatively similar to its previous incarnations, and the new XR mode actually stands for extended range, which when I first saw it I thought, oh great, that means more dynamic range, but actually it has lots more contrast and quite sort of vibrant, deep, punchy uh, saturation as well. Pro Color Deep Warmth, however, I think is fairly self-explanatory. It has lots of contrast, it's got deeper oranges and more golden yellows, and it's designed to be very flattering for skin tones. In my other EOS HD video, I compared EOS HD to Canon footage, and actually it held up really well. It looked kind of remarkably similar. I don't think I can really compare the XR and Deep Warmth modes to anything in a Canon camera, because in all honesty, I don't know what its equivalent would be, so obviously you won't be doing that. I found the Canon to be really accurate on these odd pastel type colours, but oddly not so great on the primaries. Generally I found the EOS HD profiles had more accuracy when it came to the primary colours, however I did find issues with other colours, and overall I found the XR profile to be the most accurate compared to the colour chart. Now let's compare EOS HD to a standard Sony picture profile, which is going to be Cine 1 in completely standard default settings. For this example, I thought it'd be fun to look at a skin tone test, and the most obvious things straight away to me are, contrast-wise, the standard profile looks the best balanced to me, XR and Deep Warmth look much more contrasty, and the Cine one is quite obviously the least contrasty. Color-wise, the standard profile looks the best to me, XR I found had a slightly more magenta shift and made my beard look ginger, Deep Warmth had a profound magenta shift, and you can tell this by looking at the color of my lips, and the Cine 1 example had what everyone's looking out for, for Sony, a slightly green and yellowy tint. However, with a few slight tweaks from the colour wheels, I was able to get a look that I really liked from Cine 1. I went out and got shots in my hometown of Bristol, and I was really happy actually, the standard definitely being the most realistic, and the XR and deep warmth profiles being, you know, just a little bit more warm and pumped up and contrasty. Cine 1 looked strange in comparison, but fine in isolation, bearing in mind I was using the same white balance settings for all of these clips. Again, just with a quick grade, I was really happy with the results I got from Cine 1. The Canon footage straight out the camera looked quite strange, it would definitely need some work to get it looking typically Canon-esque. I spent a fair bit of time using the XR and deep warmth modes, but to be honest, I keep going back to the standard version, and that's just because the two new versions, they have a lot of contrast and a lot of saturation, probably too much for my liking. But of course, these are things you can easily alter in your picture profile settings, so maybe just play around with it and tweak out what you don't like. I think it's very easy to look at the examples that I've given and to be quite impressed by the look that it gives you. 
Um, they are all very contrasty, punchy, saturated compared to a standard Sony profile, for example. The profiles definitely seem like they've been designed for when you're shooting video and you know you're not going to be doing much colouring in post. And for that reason, I would really highly stress that um, you need to be super careful with setting your white balance, ditto your exposure, and on that note, don't forget if you have picked up a copy of this, don't forget to check out my guide to exposing EOS HD, which is linked below. And so on to my recommendations, and um, I've already mentioned one of them, white balance, be really, really careful. Um, what you can do is if you take take something like this with you, which is a Datacolor Spider Checker 24. Um, it's kind of a lifesaver if you just show it at the beginning of a clip. You can, you can calibrate later, or you can use it to set a custom white balance. It, it's just, you, you just need to with these profiles, trust me. I would also advise doing some test shots before you start shooting just to check the level of magenta in your footage. You can easily dial out the magenta in camera by just tweaking the color phase dial. Just dial it down just a little bit and I hopefully, yeah, hopefully you'll find that that um, straightens things out for you. Also, definitely remember that these are just guidelines. So just, if you like the look of, say, the standard profile, feel free to change the gamma to something that you are more familiar working with. I know a lot of people would probably uh, would probably love to change it to something like Cine 4, because I know a lot of people like Cine 4. Personally, I like to change it to S-Log 2 or 3, for example, depending on what kind of situation I'm shooting in. Um, so just experiment with it, and um, yeah, don't, don't be afraid to just change things to how you like it. The same thing goes for the amount of saturation, because all of these profiles have a lot of saturation. Um, I think all of them, even the standard profile has just slightly more than I like, so I tend to notch it back a tiny bit, um, just just to give you slightly more uh, flexibility in, um, in editing. And so, to the giveaway. As I mentioned, I have 10 copies to give away. By the way, EOS HD didn't sponsor this video, they're just generous. To enter the competition, all you have to do is be a subscriber of this channel, uh, give this video a like, and write me a comment. And here's the thing, I'll be drawing this from a random comment, so you can comment as many times as you like and I will be drawing the winner, the winners, at an undisclosed time in the future. Could be a week from now, could be a month from now, so but somewhere in that I would have thought. So get commenting as many times as you like. Usual competitions, T's and C's are in the comments below if you need to check them. So there we go. Bearing in mind that EOS HD are not a sponsor of this channel in any way at all, we've got no kind of dodgy dealing going on at all, I still would recommend trying it because um, I think for a lot of people this would help to uh, to get the look that they're looking for. Bear in mind though, it's, it's also, it's not a set and forget, quick fix makes Sony footage look like Canon sort of thing. But then again, it does nudge things in that direction, and I still like the look that you get. So there we go, I really hope you found this helpful. Um, it's been a lot of fun making these videos, as always. So yeah, let's help each other out and shoot better video, and I'll see you next time. Cheers, guys.